In this video, we're going to talk about referencing and how it works with class instances inside of Unity. In the previous examples, we've done some really quick inspector referencing, but I wanted to spend a little bit more time to talk about exactly what is going on in case it didn't entirely click for you. The first thing to realize is that when we create a new variable for a custom class, that new container is still empty and we can expose it to the inspector with serialized field. But still, if you look in the inspector, that's empty. And if we try to declare this and then inside of our script, we say empty, right? Like this object. And then we try to do something to that container. If we have not filled it yet, then this is going to be code that doesn't really work. We'll get a null reference error. And null just means that it's nothing. And this is because we haven't filled it in at any point in time. We're just trying to do something to an empty container, which again, doesn't work. Now this code is not wrong. It just assumes that we have filled something in. This container gets its data, the game object inside of its variable, that we're getting that from somewhere else like the, like the inspector. So this is not bad. We're not doing any checking here, but this is what it would look like. So the way that we fix this is by exposing our game object variable to the inspector, we are saying we have a empty container named object of type game object. And then in the inspector, we can drag in and point it to an object in our scene to reference. So which object do we wanna look at? Well, the designer can pull in, let's say cubo two, drag that in and say, okay, this is what we're gonna fill, fill in this empty container with, so that when we call this line of code, object.setActive, we've given it cubo2, so it's gonna say cubo2.setActive is false, which is going to disable cubo2. So to go one step further, previously we called it a game object type of container, but we can make any other type of container as well. So for example, we could make a light container or a camera container, and all of these are just classes and class types so if you see a light component like this, if you were to make a variable of type light, then if we drag in this game object that has a light component on it, it's going to reference this light component. So again, this is type of light. If we give it a game object with a type of light, so a, a light component, then it, we can look at that light component in code when we wanna do something. So then we can say light dot, you know, change color or light dot increase value or whatever. And we can do that with any component you can find, whether it's a mesh render or a camera, we can create a variable of type camera and we can reference this particular component on this particular game object in the scene. So this would be our instance, our scene instance. And we can take this particular object right here, fill it in and then do something to that particular object in code. So let's look at a few examples on class instancing inside of Unity. First, I'm going to make something to control my objects. So I'm just gonna call this object controller, just to keep this simple. Again, zero it out. And we're also going to make a script called object controller, C sharp script. And finally, don't forget to attach that. Okay, so once your object controller has the object controller script, so the behavior, you're gonna open this up. Now that we've learned about input, I'm going to check inside of update. If we have pressed the Q key, then I want to do something to an object in the scene. So first of all, we're going to need to store an object in the scene that we want to affect. To do that, we need a, a type of variable for Object, let's say we wanna disable this object, so we'll call this object to disable. Now, we need a way to get this reference, and I mentioned before that we can expose a variable to the inspector by leaving serialized field here. Again, some people are gonna use public, but it's not good practice to do that for everything if you just want it in the, in the inspector. Uh, best practice is to keep it private and just expose it like this. So now if we save this and we come back into the editor, you'll see this empty container is now showing us that it's empty, which is good. 
So I'm gonna make two different objects here and I'll show you why in a second. I'm gonna do a 3D object and a cube. Then I'm also gonna do a 3D object and a sphere and pull that out. And so we have two different game objects. Let's save my scene, come back into my script. Now inside of update, I want to listen for input and if I press the Q key, then I want to disable whatever object we have stored here. Remember, input goes inside of update because it's happening every single game loop constantly over time. So if input.get key down, again, this is with the old system. If you are using the new Unity input system, then uh, you should do the appropriate syntax for that. If we press the Q key, then let's disable our object. And the code for that is access the game object container or variable right here. And if it's a type of game object, then we get access to anything that a game object can do or anything that is exposed in it. And let me show you this. If you open up the Unity API, so just open up a web browser. If you wanna know anything about a Unity class, just type in the name of the class. So object, type in Unity, and then type in API, and you'll get something like scripting API, game object. And here you can see what you have access to. So these are some properties that you can access. So like the tag, the transform, whatever. You may also want to look into the public methods. So you can add a component at runtime, which is pretty cool. Like you can dynamically add scripts if you want to a, to a game object. You can search for something with get component. You can do some other things. Um, I would recommend looking through a lot of this, but the one that I want is set active and so if we have access to a game object, a class game object, we can do any of these things and we can call these methods. Let's, let's see what set active does. If we click here, we can see you know, the method, what we can give it, and also some example code. Sometimes we'll get this, sometimes you won't. But we see that if we call gameObject.setActive and we give it a Boolean, then it will either activate or deactivate the game object. So which, that is what we want, but we can see some examples and you can do that for almost anything as long as you uh, look up the component or the class, which is good practice. So I'm gonna minimize this and this is how I knew that I could call this function. I just wanted to show you how I got to that. If I say this type of game object, whatever we have stored here, object to disable dot, and then we can also dynamically see what's here. Set active, so capital S, set active. We want to disable it, so let's turn it to false. Okay, so right now, if we press Q and we have given it an object, then when we press Q, it will disable that game object at runtime. So let's save that. Whenever I run this code, it's not going to work, and I'm going to show you why. If I hit play, and I click down here in the game view, I press Q, we're going to get an error, unassigned reference exception. This means that we are trying to access a class instance, but we don't have anything assigned. It's, it's null. And that is because we are running the set active on our variable right here, but the container is empty. So what we need to do is we need to assign by drag and drop our cube to fill this in. So now it's gonna say cube type of game object dot set active false. So yeah, once you drag and drop that in, this is what the code looks like. We're just filling this in here. So now the cube will say set active false. Save it, hit play. And now if we click down here again and we press Q, it will disable. Now the cool thing about this is because it's looking for a type of game object, if I select this and hit delete right here, we can give it any game object in the scene. I can give it my sphere, save, play, hit Q. We can even give it our main camera because remember, everything is a game object. Hit play, we've disabled our rendering. Even more bizarre, we can give it the same object that it's attached to, which I don't recommend you do this in most cases, but if we hit play, see we're disabling our object controller. It doesn't matter, as long as you give it a game object, you can run any methods attached to that game object, or you can access any public variables on that game object, which is pretty cool because this, this is how we can start to have some objects affect other objects in your scene. Let's look at another example. Maybe instead of a game object, we want to access a component on a game object, so like a collider or something. Um, let's look at the directional light. 
maybe we want to change the intensity of a light. Actually, let's make a new one. Let's make a game object light point light. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's zero this out. And then also let's create a plane so that we can see it. So I'm going to right click 3D object plane, zero that out as well. And we'll just pull up our light a little bit. It's really bright. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to access this instance of this light component on this game object, right? So this particular light component into this script, and then I wanna manipulate it somehow. So I'm gonna come into my object controller. So think about what you need. First, you need to store it somewhere so that you can access it later. So let's create a new serialized field and think about the type. Since we want the light component on that object, not the entire game object, we want the light component, let's type in light. We want this to be a type of light is the container. We'll call this light to increase. Again, I'm just being very overly verbose with my variable names in this case. And let's do this on W. We'll say if input.getKeyDown keycode.w. And if this is true, then we want to take our light to increase, just copy that, if we say dot, we can see everything that we have access to. We can get the color, the intensity, the range, all this other stuff, which is pretty cool. So let's actually use the intensity. Let's take the intensity and just super, super increase it. I think it defaults, I think it's default at one. Right, yeah, intensity one. Let's, let's just multiply that by 10. Let's say intensity, is 10. So I like to increase dot intensity equals 10. So we're reassigning the value one to be 10. One is just the default of what it starts off with when we press W. So again, if we press Q, we'll disable whatever object is in here. And we press W, we will increase the intensity of any light stored in here. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to again, press play. And again, this is not going to work. If I press W, unassigned. You need to remember to assign your object into your container if you do it this way. So we need to make sure that we come down to point light. And I'm also gonna put the cube back into the object to, to disable right there. Hit save, hit play. And you'll see if I press Q, we disable our game object that we assigned. If we press W, we have drastically increased the intensity of this light at runtime. So this is pretty cool. This is how you can start to have some objects communicate with other objects. All we're doing is we are uh, driving that with an input press at the moment, and we are giving it the instance of the object by dragging and dropping it into the inspector. So you could start to do some very interesting things with this. Like you can apply damage to things, or you can change the color of things or whatever. And this is how we can start to think about uh, driving logic with input and how to access very specific objects in our scene.